Well, I'm going to start on the steering column today, seeing I can't do much more on the dash. I decided to wait, uh, like I say, to glue that pad on until I get the other instrument pod to, to fit. And I'll have to do what I can, you know, if I have to gouge some foam out where it screws on or peel some of the vinyl back and cut some out and restaple it in, I think I can make it work. It's just going to take some, some horsing with it. Um, you know, which is a hassle, but that's, you know, life with reproduction stuff. A lot of that reproduction stuff. That's why I don't like repo stuff. It's just generally doesn't fit well. It's not, you know, people just don't take the care and finesse to really make something correct. I mean, they could sell those things like hotcakes if they made them so they're, they fit right and look good. But because they didn't take that extra you know, hour or two to make them fit right, they're really useless and probably won't sell very many of them. And I, will, I won't recommend anyone buying them in the future. If this next one doesn't fit, then I definitely wouldn't recommend them. If it fits, okay, good. You know, I, I give them the benefit of the doubt they could have made a, a bad one. But anyway, I took pictures of my wire connector here because I got to take this apart and Somewhere I gotta find my little tool. It's like a little tube that slides over these to push the little ears in so you can take these wires out of the connectors. You cannot slide these wires up the steering column with them with them in the connector. They have to be removed from the connector. When they assemble these at the factory, they shove the wires through, and then they put the, the plastic connector on. So I took uh, photos with my phone of where the wire connectors go and I'll show you what else I do just you know you never know if you lose your phone or drop it or bust it or something happens to it you're SOL so it's kind of a good idea to have a backup plan so I'll show you what I have for a backup here. There I am hoping everything shows up so as you can see on this connector there's a little little tab on it there and what I do is I set this connector on paper and then trace around it with a pen and with that little tab I highlight it and this one's got one of those tabs also it's you know they're they're obvious that they that they fit one way and this also has a number right here a one and a three there's a one right there and a three right there I don't think these ones are numbered some of them are but anyway I just kind of made a little sketch trace out of that plug so that's the little nub and then I numbered every hole where a wire is and then I write down the color of the wire so white with a yellow green blue and then white blue green white blue yellow and then that one's orange blue green brown that way I know which wires go in what holes when I go to put it back together the shot manual shows nothing about the disassembly of these steering columns whatsoever. It shows an exploded view and what it looks like I need to take these screws out, this comes off, then I can take this out and start taking some of this turn signal and wiring stuff out of the column but like I say first I gotta get these connectors off and then I can start taking snap rings and screws and get this collar off and this collar I'll just uh, clean up my bead blast cabinet and repaint. This collar I'm replacing and then I can paint this chrome piece when the thing's apart and I'll paint the column. That way when I, you know, I can put this on and then I can get this back on and stuff. Get it back together and I might just bolt it back in the car and let it hang down when I go to put the dash in if I haven't got the pad. I suspect I'll have this done. I, if I really knuckled down to it, I could probably have this thing done in a day easily. But this is a hobby, and it's a beautiful day out today, and I want to do some outdoor things, maybe go for a walk and stuff. But I am going to work on this this weekend. Tomorrow's supposed to be snowy out and stuff, and so maybe, you know, tomorrow will be a good day to come out here and just go to town on it. Anyway, let me, uh, let me get this, see if I can find my tool for this connector first. That's first things first. Couldn't find my little tool but basically there's a little tab that sticks out on these and you just push it in I'm just using a little screwdriver you just find it and push it in and then they pop right out I just thought uh, it's the light is poor here so it's hard for me to see where the where the tab is I 
and then once you get that tab pushed in if I can see it that's where the tool helps it's just a little tube like thing that slides over the, the wire and uh, compresses that little thing and then you have to take a little something and pop that thing back out so when you push it in it pulls doesn't pull right back out but anyway I'm just gonna go through and get all these little connectors off I can see better when I can hold it up to the light so anyway we're getting it I'll uh, I'll probably find my tool once this is all apart you know how that goes so I got both the connectors off all the wires are just sitting there spaghetti like now I can uh, I'm just going to put these in a little baggie and put them in the box of goodies I have over there for the steering column stuff so I don't lose any of it. And now we're going to, what I like to do is I like to take these wires and the way Ford does these is they cut them all at different, different lengths so you don't have a big glob of connectors in one uh, one area when you're pulling it through this it just makes it easier see how that is see how much different most of those are that just makes it easier to pull up through the collar here and when I if I have to repair a harness to where I got to do multiple say I had to repair every one of these wires in a harness I'll cut them at different lengths when I solder and shrink tube and tape them up you don't end up with some humongous ginormous uh, glob of tape where all the connectors are and you know that way if one of the wires or something pierces through the shrink tubing or whatever it doesn't short to another one so I always try and stagger my joints and wiring harnesses so that they're not all in one spot but that you have to there's no getting that switch out or the stuff apart without taking the connectors off your wiring harness it's a it's the only way you're going to get it apart and seeing there is no nothing in the shop manual about how these are held together we're just gonna wing it so if something flies out and hits the camera it's not my fault <laughs> we'll blame it on the shop manual it does have a whoops gotta pick that up don't want to drop my fasteners on the floor I'll get lost in the garage so that one holds that top bit on and uh, we'll just see what what we can get apart here. Get a pair of needle nosers or something to get pull that out. This usually these there as I say usually they move their your switch that actually puts the blinkers on that would be turning the right hand blinker on right now. And I'm pushing on the wiring to, I don't know if you can see down the column that far. I can't see in the viewfinder, but I am push, just pushing on the wiring to get that out. I am not pulling on that because I don't want to break the connectors there at the end. And it looks like I'm going to have to move the camera because I'm starting to hit the camera. But there's a snap ring right there and a couple of nuts right there. And this collar should come off. All right, let me... Uh, Oh, that was the lamp for the instrument panel lights. It states that that's supposed to be a number 45 lamp. And that doesn't look like a number 45. That seemed awfully bright to me. The number, I think that's 1445. That's the lamp it's supposed to have in the, for the shift uh, thing, but that doesn't... I don't know, maybe that is correct. I'll, I'll, it looks almost like one of those flashbulb type 
bulbs, you know, those ones that, you know what I'm talking about. If you remember old cameras that had flash bulbs that pushed in and out, that's kind of what that bulb looks like. There we go. We got the harness all out. I took about that much, well, about that much tape off of here because what was happening was this was bunching up and catching. There's a little, uh, I'll show you little doodad on the steering column where that goes through. Little channel right here, you can see where it comes out right here and it was catching on this edge the tape was. So I just pulled it back out, untaped a little bit and then it went right through, no problems. Just to give you the heads up on this, I'm just uh, winging this. I'm only going, you know, I, all I have is an exploded view but I've had a lot of steering columns apart over the years. I haven't had a 66 Ford column apart, but I have had many Ford, GM, and Chrysler columns apart. That's the snap ring I just took off. And then there's a couple of uh, 7 16 nuts in here. We'll get them off. We'll see where we go from there. Need to get my little doohickey to turn this. I don't know, I might need a puller to get this off the... Oh, no. How about that? Some you need a puller to get this off. That's where the D-den is for the shift lever. Like when you pull it out of park, or that's that's park. And that's loose too, so I'll tighten that up. See how it moves? Reverse. Neutral your two drives. Low. Yeah. And then this is where looks like that original bezel was never fastened in here. Hmm. That's like a bushing right there, a steering shaft bushing. The steering shaft, see now, is loose in the in the column. I could probably pull it out if I move move this off. The thing for the neutral start is like. Well, no, maybe I could just take the shaft out. But anyway, we're gonna I'm not gonna take any more than I have to apart on this column. Might have to take this and this snap ring off. That's another snap ring. Probably have to take them off. May have to take them off to get the shift collar off. We'll uh we'll worry about that when we get to it. I was looking at the exploded view in the shop manual. It looks like there's a bolt right there I gotta undo that it explains the hole in the bottom of the shift collar so let me uh, get a socket and pull that out and see what happens let's see what this does if, oh wow that wasn't even tight yeah I could have turned that out with my fingers that's the bolt I just removed Still not free from the column. I may have to, I don't know, I'll look. Yeah, I'll have to look and see. You might need a, sometimes you got to use little like, little things that clamp around there and push this and just, they're kind of press fit on. But let me uh, look at it, the exploded view a little more. I did take the steering shaft out because it's just less weight and less things to horse around. Let me uh, go set this somewhere and we'll finish fussing with that. It actually did just slide off. It just needed to, I set this on the ground and just pulled up on this and off it came because I looked in the shop manual and it didn't really show anything on how that uh, came off. So let me, uh, I'm going to take the shift tube out too. I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to have to take this little thing off. Hopefully I won't I don't want to damage it. I'm going to look at it and see what it looks like it just pries over, but I don't want to take a chance on damaging it. So I'm going to uh, just fuss with it a little bit here. I'm going to try and show this. So this is the little thing. This is what works the neutral safety switch in the backup lights. And it's like, uh, does it show up there? It's like, um, there, that 
shows a little better. It's like folded over. And I just don't want to take a chance on screwing that up. It's, see, it's in good shape. It's just dirty right there from, you know, all being opened and up. So I'm just going to throw this in the parts washer and clean it up. And you can see right, let me uh, hang on. You can see right through everything. It's free and clear, nothing in there. There is a plastic bushing right here, but that won't hurt anything in the parts washer. So I'm going to just put this in the parts washer and then I might bead blast this and then throw it back in the parts washer to get make sure there's no grit in it. You know, that's one thing with glass beads and that's why I use glass beads. It won't destroy things if it's still in something to where sand will just grind away and destroy it. So that's why, that's the main reason why I use glass beads in my blast cabinet. It saves, if you don't get every grain out, it saves destroying something but I think parts washer bead blast parts washer paint how's that sound and yeah I got these off with the rag joint off this is that ground wire between the neutral start switch and the neutral start switch and the firewall sorry I'm not looking in the viewfinder and this is the other seal I'll clean it all up and get that stuff all cleaned up and looking like new ready to go back in so the column is a part 100 percent this is the little piece i got to paint and i did get some tape to mask that this is for like uh when you want to tape really you know edges so you don't get a bleed through or anything so that it's it was like ten or twelve dollars for that roll of tape at the paint store, and uh, so you know it's it's uh it does pretty good. I had some thinner stuff, but I wanted something a little wider, and then I can just mask it with regular tape on this and paper when I go to paint that uh, dash panel. But I may paint this first just to see how I like that chrome paint. Look at the chrome shine on the inside there. Yeah, I think I'll clean that up and give it a shot with the airbrush so I can reassemble this column. I, this column is going to take me a lot less time than what I expected. I mean, yeah, this can go in the parts washer. I don't know if I'm going to, well, I could probably be blasted. I'll just have to not do the inside, but just do the outside. Tighten these up. Just go through it all. This i got to take out this apparatus right here these two screws and all the dirt and stuff this is what that's what pushes on the oh that's tough spring too that's going to be a joy to put in the new collar and uh but that's that kind of is what gives that lever the spring tension is that right there it's actually two little screws and a little cap hold that spring in all right let me uh let me go to town here and get this cleaned up and then we'll go from there. Just kind of give you the heads up. This is what the where the wiring goes through this part of the column right here. When I put it back together, I'll put the wiring through here and start it through here and get most of it pulled through before I, you know, really start to bolt stuff up. It's just easier to to, you know, if you're trying to fight it through something like this you know going down in through it's just easier to run it through everything get it started and then put your assembly together I'll show you when I get ready to put it together now I might be able to better show how that this hole here is so hogged out and elongated it's almost twice the width of the, what the original hole should be this one's hogged out as you can see but not as bad as the one down in there Hopefully I won't be in anyone's way here, but I'm just going to clean this up here with the parts washer. That was pretty dirty and that just cleaned up really nice. I just want to get all the dirt off of it before I throw it in the bead blast can. And after I get it cleaned up, I'll take it outside and blow it off with some compressor. It looks like bits of that plastic bezel are still stuck in this, so I might have to... Um, Little, they're like little tabs. I'll show you when I get to it. Yeah, this is 
This is, I'm gonna put that shift collar in here so I can clean out where I gotta get that stuff out of there too. I don't know, you might not be able to see any. Maybe my hands are in the way of everything, I don't know. So, but yeah, it's, there, that's that little white thing, that's the little piece there, part of that, that plastic collar. But this is gonna clean up nice. It's all in really good shape. Cleaning food everywhere from that careful here. Yeah, if I won that, that just I see that billion dollar Mega Millions. We had a winner, it was here in Michigan. I immediately went, I normally don't buy lottery tickets, but seeing it was billion dollars, I went and bought one. And when I saw the winner was from Michigan, I immediately went and got my ticket and checked it, but I only had one matching number, which I guess is better than none, but it's certainly not a billion dollars. I don't know what I'd do with a billion if I wanted anyway. I'd probably buy a big warehouse and stuff it full of old cars. I, I like where I live. I like my community. I don't know where I'd move. I don't even know if I'd replace the truck or any of my vehicles. I like them. They're good working. I don't have no reason to replace them. I think sometimes that kind of be more aggravation than it would be worth. But I wouldn't mind having it. I'm not going to deny that. This is where that shift spring thing is. Yeah, I'd have one of every 59 GM car ever made. And I mean one of every one. Probably Chrysler and products too. 59, 60 Chrysler products. I like the 60 Chrysler products. They're pretty wild. Even the 61's that forward look. And I probably have a whole slug of Fords too. I like the Ford station wagons, um, the country squares and stuff. And like I said, have an industrial building to put them in. I'd even have some Corvettes. A friend of my a friend of my mom's, her husband was a big shot at General Motors when the world headquarters was on Grand River and Detroit, Grand River and Woodward. He's since passed away, but he uh, he had a big house with a walkout basement, and his walkout basement was like a man cave, you know, with a bar and pool table and all the good stuff. And he actually had a prototype Corvette there, and I don't think the car was ti ever titled because you know it was a prototype. He managed to most of those cars were destroyed when they were. Um, finished with them, but that one he managed to get out of there, and a lot of people tell me, oh, they're all white. Well, this was like a light navy blue color. So they weren't all white. It did have a 235.6 in it with a power glide that it did have. And uh, when his wife, he bought his wife a brand new 67 Corvette with a 327 fuel injector. I think it was 327. It was fuel injected. It said fuel injection on the hood. And she had that car until she passed away. Her and my mom would go out and do things. And she always drove that Corvette. She'd drive over to the house with it all the time. And it was a yellow one with black stripe at 67. Yeah, these are. This is the turn signal nozzle. I thought I might as well give it a wash. And then, like I say, I'll blow everything off and then I'll... This has a oil light bushing. So they didn't use a, a bearing. They used an oil light bushing in the... Uh, um, for the steering shaft up at the top here. Yeah, this thing it definitely needs a serious cleaning. All that old nasty grease in there and stuff. We'll, we'll put all new grease in. It looks like white lithium-based grease, so that's what I'll use when I put it together. And uh, hopefully if I can get it, I don't know if I'll get it painted today, so in this video you might not see it painted. That might be in a future video because uh, it's getting late. I'm going to be blast everything and prime it. Probably let it sit overnight. And then tomorrow they're talking about snow. 
some snow showers all day, so I won't be able to use the spray booth. It'll be snowing in it. And then Monday and Tuesday, I think they're talking our biggest snow of the year, a whopping four to six inches. Yeah, it's we're really in a snow drought here, really behind. I, I remember, you know, always there's more snow by now, but there's we're a little below average, but we're supposed to go above average this this uh, coming week. But yeah, if we're gonna get an inch, we might as well get a foot. I'd rather have a foot than an inch of snow. And uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. But I got the uh, snow blower out and ready. I hadn't only used it once this year, so I thought well, I'll get it out of the. Get it out of the shed and warm it up. Make sure it's going to run. Nothing more aggravating when you go to use something that doesn't start because you haven't started. If it doesn't have gas in it, I could just let it sit, but it's full of gas. So sometimes you got to start them a little more often when they have gas in them. So that looks pretty good. And check this out. This has been soaking down in here for literally for months now. <laughs> So I'll just leave it in here for now. I got a, two rebuild kits and I got two Autolite 4100s and I'm going to try and put them both together. I had one I got for parts and one I got uh, to rebuild the one that was on, or kit to rebuild the one that was on the car and I had one that I needed a couple parts off of. But I think I, I have enough where I can put them both together. We'll see. But there we go. That's all cleaned up with the pressure washer, I'll blow it out a little compressed air and then off to the bead blast cabinet. There we go, I got it sitting here in the garage ready to go. It's a 1976 Aaron's snow throw. It's a five horse Tecumseh engine on it. There is a number there. 42166. So I assume that's a date code. Now the dashboard was date coded I think February 11th. Some of those pieces in the dash as you remember when I was working on it. So the dashboard was all made in about mid-February, probably sent to the assembly plant for the end of April assembly. And this column, yeah, I don't know, somebody knows if that means April 21, 66. The car rolled off the assembly line April 29th, 66. I'm going to tape that off when I paint the column, save the, save the numbers there. I think I'm going to tape it off before I bead blast it. I don't want to remove that. That cleaned up nice. I'm going to bead blast the outside of this. I don't want to bead blast any of the inside of it. So I might uh, put something in here, rag, stuff something in there, and stuff something in here too. And I'm just going to focus on this edge here, you know, this outside part. And then I'll uh, zinc chromate and, and paint it that trim black like the dashboard. This I just cleaned up so I can take that piece out without dealing with all the uh, nasty grease and stuff in there. I'll probably put a clamp or something on that. That really takes a lot to push it and then just slowly release the clamp. I put like four layers of masking tape on there so I don't blast through the tape if I do hit it there but generally what I'll do is I'll avoid hitting around here and then I'll just sand and feather around the edges and then I'll just put a piece of tape with it. Kind of pulled up so there's no sharp edge when I paint it and that way you know, it'll look all right. And I'll take the tape off of it after I blast it. I don't want that to be on there a while and then pull a, you know, it'd be a waste of time if it just pulls the, the numbers off when I pull the tape. I can see uh, into my cabinet better when I have the lights off in the garage. So that's why I just turn lights off. And I tried to clean my window up here. It looks like there's still some, some dirt on here. Just tries to, there's like a film here that uh, you used to, Keep from blasting the the glass here. And you change this film when it gets all bead blasted, but occasionally I gotta wipe the dust off. You can see the the edge of the film. I don't know if that shows up there or not. I don't know if it shows that far over on the video. So let me uh, get the blasting here. Turn on my. <laughs> I'm not going to video all uh, the blasting, but you get the picture. 
and uh, get this done and we'll get it primed up. All cleaned up and ready for some primer. And again, all cleaned up and ready for some primer. Even uh, blasted in there. Oops, sorry, wasn't showing it in the viewfinder again, but yeah, it's it's going to get uh, all primed up here and let the primer dry overnight. Maybe tomorrow if it's not snowing, we'll put some paint on it. The date code's still on there, and tomorrow I'll just lightly sand around there, and then when I tape it, I'll leave the tape, like I say, so there's no sharp edges. And that way I can keep the date code on the steering column. And another thing with this, I can see up in the column and those tabs have bent over pretty far. So they must have had a machine that after they dropped that down, they'd set that in there. And it must have just went in and peeled, or peeled those over or done something. Because there's no, uh, no way I'm going to pry that off as far as those tabs going in or are bent over. It's just not going to happen. So I'm just going to leave the shift tube in. I suppose if I had to get it out, I could get it out and then just spot tack it back on with the welder but I really don't want to do that it it's fine the way it is and uh, I'm just gonna leave it exactly the way it is you can see that's all nicely primed up too this was painted without being masked because there's overspray I'll take some lacquer thinner and wipe the, the primer off there and I'll tape that because I don't want to get paint on that bearing but they probably painted it and then put the bearing in because there's black overspray on this and black overspray and everywhere in it. And uh, I don't want to get paint on the bearings, so I will clean or uh, mask it before I paint it. But I'm going to let that dry overnight. That's the primer I used. And again, you don't need to put this stuff on very heavy, just enough to, to coat the metal. And some areas you can even still see the metal a little bit through. But that just gives you a nice bite into the metal and then something for the paint to, to bond to. So tomorrow that will become trim black. Give you an idea what tools I used. I used a 7 16 inch quarter drive socket, a 3 8 inch quarter inch drive socket. I like to use six points everywhere I can, a little nut driver handle, quarter inch drive ratchet, a pair of needle nosers, a small regular screwdriver, uh, Phillips and obviously a pair of uh, snap ring players and these will you can push these buttons to change them to internal or external snap rings. That's uh, that's all it took to get that steering column apart. All right I'm going to call it a day. Definitely if you like the video hit the like button. It certainly helps share the video if you want. If you want to subscribe to my channel to see that steering column all together the dash in. Hit that 348 icon that pops up there that will subscribe you and thank you for watching my videos.